So today I want to take time to talk about a subject that I've been asked about a lot and this is the low voltage cutout latching relay or latching circuit. So I have a previous video using a relay and a low voltage cutout battery protection board just like this one. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the board since we have talked about it and even using a relay or contactor with it. But this is the style board that I'm talking about. For example, the XHM609. And one of the discussions we had in the previous video was also about it being up to 60 volt rated. Some of these on Amazon especially show like a 6 to 36 volt rating. But as I showed here, you can find some that say they are 60 volt as I was using mine for with the Ego 56 volt stuff. But this is why I had said they're 60 volt rated is because the ones I bought did claim to be so. So in the last video, a lot of comments were made about, you know, I showed the relay and I showed the board controlling the relay. And I did talk about you can make it latch if you wanted to. Well, a lot of people were asking, you know, how do I do that? Because I don't want any drain to be on my battery and the board itself will drain your battery. And by the way, it's not just this board. I have used these 60 volt boards here, which just has a higher current rating relay on board. Um, you may also remember I've used this low voltage cutoff switch here that's also rated for 60 volts in some earlier videos. And we had discussions based on other things like this Drock battery meter here. This is a really nice meter. It has the temperature probe as well as your voltage connections. And you can set this up to show your battery percentage and voltage. So it's got a lot of parameters and it does have a buzzer that goes off at a predetermined point you select. And this is a little bit cheaper version of a very similar device. They both will read temperature as well as the voltage. Some you can scale to the lithium and cell count that you use and some you just order based on actual battery voltage. So there's many combinations and many options out there if you just wanted an alarm. But of course the alarm will stay attached to the battery and that can be an issue as well but it may work for some people. So it is many options but one thing you'll need to drop out completely from a battery is going to be a latching relay and this example circuit here is exactly that so this is a 24 volt coil and that's very important that you have the right coil for your battery voltage most coils will hold in fine at a little bit reduced rate once it pulls in but sometimes it is hard to find coil rating for a voltage that your battery may be using but to show how this works here i'm going to cut my power supply on I have it set for about 24 volts. So coming in on the leads here where my supply is hooked up will be your battery. And you see my board is not coming on. If you follow this around from the battery, it's just going here. And then it'll feed the board. But before this relay can pull in, if you'll see here, I have my push button across what will be the battery plus. And going over to my A1 on my coil, my coil plus on my 24 volt coil. So what you have to do is push this in and hold it long enough for the board to power up. As long as your voltage is high enough for it to pull in, you can let go of the button and there you go. The board is holding the relay in. It's just a momentary push button for pulling in the relay until the board can latch. And see what will happen if we start cutting our power supply down. Once we get to our setting of 17.5 volts on this board, it drops out and boom, we don't have any current flow. So that is how we would drop out the battery completely. And if we press the push button again, it's not going to reset until our battery voltage gets above our setting. And I have it set for about 3 volts above, so about 20.5 volts and it will come back on. So if I go to like 21.5 volts and come back and push the button and hold it, yep, we have enough. And it latches back. So you could use your, your kid's ride on toy or whatever this might be powering, right? And you could set this for your specific needs. If I double press the plus button, you can see I got it set for 17.5. 
if I double press the minus button, you can see I have a differential voltage set of three volts. So it has to rise back above the cutoff by three volts before it can reset. If you long press the plus, that is our calibration or our adjustment. We can adjust this to be exactly what we're reading. That's why I have my meter out here. I did have to adjust a couple of decimal points. It was pretty close from the factory of what I was reading with my meters. And if we long press the minus button, we could set a time here. Instead of setting it for say three volts, you could also have that as well as a time that the load would reconnect if you would like to in minutes. I leave it at zero. I will put the instructions on setting this up on here so you can screenshot it or look at it as well if you would like. And it might be a little bit clearer to read on this snapshot here if you find it helpful. I also want to share with you this diagram. I'm going to throw it up on the screen for you. And there you go. Feel free to pause this and take a screenshot if you would like. This is just showing the 24 volt example just as we talked about with the push button. It's what's going across the coil. And if you'll notice, we're not getting an input to our low voltage cutout board until we pull in that relay. So only that push button will give us power to get it started. We also notice that our output goes to the coil in this example. So the relay on this board is not really loaded. It's just simply pulling in the coil in this example. And the reset button, of course, is getting us started. And if the board did take more load, that does mean the push button would also have to take that load temporarily. If the load was activated as soon as you press the push button. As we see here, the load has its own contact, which comes off the battery plus and feeds over to the top of it. So the board in this case is not having to take any of the load and neither is the push button. So we'll put this away now. We just wanted to take a little bit of time here to show a demonstration and talk about different boards. I like this one because it is cheap. This right here is a really good board. It does cost more with a lot more features. And to be honest, it's a little bit more difficult to set up. It's a little bit more parameters to it, but it's still very powerful. It's a very handy cutoff board. And if you did use it for the 60 volts, you would need a 48 volt or higher relay coil, of course, or contactor coil. We also discussed these little alarms, these little battery meters with the alarms built in. And I'll put a little bit of information up here on these and the type that I have bought here. My favorite being the Drock. Just make sure you select it for the voltage you are planning on using it for. And if you're interested in this one, it's a lot of parameters to set up, including uh, your voltage, your series cell count, your, your percentage setup. It's all able to be scaled and set up. And it is really nice. It took me a few minutes to figure it out, but it was very, very handy. And the temperature readout is just a bonus here, but if you were just looking for alarm, that would work as well. But again, it's going to be draining on your battery all the time, unless it was coming off of something like this. And I do have an example of a relay with a 48 volt coil here. But one thing to keep in mind, is kind of hard to find one that has more than one pole. This is a single pole double throw. So it has a normally open and normally closed contact, but it's only got the one pole. So if you rig this one up to work similar, you would absolutely have to have a push button that could take the load temporarily as it went across the coil and the load of the board itself while it was powering up. Since you don't have the multiple contacts or poles as you do on a relay like this 24 volt in the example here. This push button here has plenty of current capability of handling this relay coil. In this example, that's all it has to do is just jump across and pull it in. We'll show this dropping out one more time here. Yep, cut off voltage and there we go. And one bonus you see here is if you do push the button the way this is set up, even though we can't relatch here until the voltage gets high enough, if you did have a kid's ride on toy out way out in the yard which typically is where it would die right <laughs> and that did happen you could use this button also as like an emergency bypass you could hold the button down and as you can see here you could still run it as long as you're okay with doing that and the battery really hasn't gotten too low right you could actually push this button in just to get it into the garage you know what i mean so 
you could use this for a temporary bypass, but you would have to let it be known that it wasn't okay to use for any other reason. But that will absolutely protect your battery as far as in automatic, just dropping off. And as far as many of the comments from earlier videos, I hope that answers your questions about the latch and relay and how I would make one drop out to protect the pack completely. So I hope you found this video helpful today. I'll have some links down in the description of some of these items and other tools I find helpful on my workbench. All those links are going to be affiliate links and they help support the channel. So any link you click on, I greatly appreciate. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.